Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. Sandy Muscup here. Hope you guys are doing well. Give the video a thumbs up and hit subscribe on the channel. Plenty of Newcastle United content coming your way before the new campaign kicks off in less than a month. Are we excited for it? Southampton, of course, will be the visitors here on the opening day of the season. Expect it to be a sellout. As you can see, I'm just beside the stack here at St James's Park and this venue is coming along nicely. Daniels hinted it would be ready for the start of the season which will be very very exciting as you can see the sign is now up the air condition units are on the roof is on as well for the large part of it so it's really coming along quite quickly and with less than a month to go it has to uh, there's been lots of excitement about it, lots of questions about it the food vendors have been picked so you can go onto the website and find out who you'll be buying from I think this will be a really good venue for the city and finally nice to see coming along and close to completion and there is excitement for the new campaign i think it would be uh, be a bit more excitement if it had a few uh, more faces through the door but we wait for more additions for the newcastle united squad of course they've signed john ruddy they've signed lloyd kelly they've signed like demos from nottingham forest and lewis horse become a permanent signing as well but apart from that not being a big marquee signing i do think lloyd kelly will prove to be one of the best retransfers potentially that the Premier League has ever seen. I think he's absolute quality, versatile, can play centre-back and can play left-back as well. Offers that competition to Lewis Hall and Dan Byrne out at left-back. But of course, offers that competition as well um, to Dan Byrne at centre-back as well because it will be Fabian Chair, you would think, on the right side and then Dan Byrne versus Lloyd Kelly for that left-sided centre-back position until Sven Botman uh, comes back from that injury. Good to see him taking up some training um, away from the group he's on back on the pitch looks to be kicking a ball as well plenty of updates over on his instagram really refreshing to see him back probably a little bit sooner than many had expected so hopefully that can speed up his recovery process and be back playing for newcastle united sooner than we had originally thought of course you don't want to rush those sort of injuries big big injuries but really good to see that it doesn't seem to have impacted them maybe as severely as we had first feared we've seen uh, Miguel Almiron, he's been posting videos of his, his his training away from the camp. Of course, he was on international duty with uh, Paraguay at the Copa America, and he's been now training back home, uh, going through some drills. You can see that on his Instagram as well. Lots of speculation over at Miguel Almiron. Of course, linked with the move away from Newcastle United back in January to Saudi Arabia. That didn't happen. Then he was tipped to be, and still is probably tipped to be, the uh, the biggest sellable asset they've got this summer. But no one has come forward yet to make a purchase. Ipswich were linked, but you would probably think they've spent uh, the best part of their budget now on the likes of Liam Delap and um, a couple of others. Who in the Premier League is going to go for Miguel Almiron? Look, I'm a big fan. I think his work rate is unrivaled. It was fantastic to see him have that purple patch of a season when he scored something like 11 goals and was Keaton Newcastle United getting into the Champions League. But it didn't happen from last season. Still putting him 100% but didn't get the goals nor the assists and you just wonder whether Premier League side would really be splashing out 15, 20 million for Miguel Almiron. Will it be a move abroad? Look, he wants to stay in the Premier League, we are led to believe, but if someone from maybe Sarrier came in with a bid, could he be tempted to go over to Italy? There is always going to be that speculation about teams in Saudi Arabia coming in for him, but he doesn't appear to want to go over there. I think it would take a big chunk of a wage to get him over there. We have seen players go like Ruben Neres, of course, and St. Maximum, but he's gone to Fonabachi now, so that didn't last very long. Miguel Amiron seems to have you know, a desire to stay in Europe and prove himself at the highest levels, whether it be in the Premier League or another top league across Europe. So I'd, I just can't see him moving to Saudi Arabia, if I'm honest, unless he takes a massive, massive uh, pay packet, which some players uh, may want to do and set themselves up for life. Other potential departures still to come. Well, I think Kieran Trippier is probably the other one that most people are focused on, most people are talking about. Newcastle United's right back. I tipped Tino Livermento this time last year, uh, or this time we know after he'd signed for Newcastle United to be the first choice right back for the new season coming. I'm sticking by that. I do think Kieran Trippier probably will leave. Whether Newcastle United will get too much money from, I'm not too sure. I think maybe, in hindsight, selling them back in January was probably uh, something they maybe should have done. Maybe cashed in, of course, Eddie Howe didn't want to lose that leadership and captaincy uh, qualities that Kieran Trippier has got. But when you think about how his season ended, of course, he did go over with England to the Euros, but it didn't work too well for him there. He was put in a position which he's not favourable with. Still put in a decent enough shift, but I think we probably saw 
a little bit of confirmation that maybe he's l lacking that little bit of pace that keeps him at the top level of Premier League football. That said, as a great leader, straight, still very good with the dead balls and still a very good defender. So if he stays at Newcastle tonight, I don't think he'll have too many disappointed fans, but I think there'll be quite a few of you guys wanting Newcastle United to cash in if they can get anywhere close to 15 million for Kieran Trippier. And then the other one is Callum Wilson, Newcastle United's number nine, out with an injury, a doubt for that opening game against Southampton. Massive, massive frustration. Every time we talk about Callum Wilson, because he's such a good striker, one of the best in the Premier League when fit, but how often is he fit? Newcastle United cannot gamble on his fitness because we saw last season Alexander Izak pay the price when he wasn't feeling up to it, when he was a little bit off colour. Eddie Howe did not have an out-and-out -out striker to replace him with to give him a rest. Newcastle United need that this season if they're going to achieve top four football. And again, though, easier said than done. Who's going to come in and pay 10, 15 million for Callum Wilson, knowing his injury record, knowing the only reason you cast night you want to sell him is because they can't guarantee his fitness. That's not a great starting point to try and move someone on, is it? You know, could they see him go off to Saudi Arabia, where maybe the climate, uh, maybe the lack of competitiveness in the games might benefit him a little bit more in terms of trying to combat those injuries. Of course, James Bunce has come in as the performance director, the fitness uh, director, to look at the players' fitnesses and to try and ensure that they get the best out of them, but also keep them fresh and free of injury. So maybe he can find the remedy. And look, if Newcastle United can find the remedy for Callum Wilson and keep him fit for the entirety of the season and ensure he plays 25 to 30 games, then I'm all for him staying. But I do think that's going to be a huge task and not one I can see James Bunce, even with all of his experience, managing to come to a, a positive conclusion for Callum Wilson Newcastle United because his history, his record shows, I just don't think the remedy is there, unfortunately. And I would love to be proved wrong. I'm sure you guys would love to be proved wrong because to have Callum Wilson and Alexander, Alexander Izak as your two main striker options, both fully fit, both competing against each other through the week in training and both you know, potentially you know, one of the other starting on, on a Saturday, it's absolute dreamland because you've got two quality strikers there. But unfortunately... You cast an eye gamble on Callum Wilson. It's a gamble I can see them losing, and we will have a situation in the not too distant future where Alexander Isaac needs a rest, or look, he's just out of form for a game or two, and he can't turn to Callum Wilson to replace him and give him that rest. And we don't want to be in that situation again, do we? Let me know in the comments what you would do with Callum Wilson and who you think he might, or where you think he might end up. Will a Premier League side gamble on him? Again, I'm not too sure because of that injury record, but do let me know in the comments um other exits well cast i haven't really got too many sellable assets you you, you, would, you would say that they can cash in on can't see jacob murphy going anyhow we really like so i think he's a big part of the squad he's versatile and that's the reason he'll be kept around of course you want to keep your best players the likes of bruno and anthony gordon can't see them going anywhere and you're like not in a position where they need to sell unless the player knocks on the door and asks to go you know the, the psr worries of that we saw at the end of June, all solved now, which is fantastic. Of course, just Newcastle United's look like Yakuba Minter came on for Brighton and scored a wonderful goal in a pre-season friendly, which definitely rattled a few Newcastle United fans on social media, and it, it maybe reaffirmed to some that they've made a mistake in letting him go. But look, it was a necessary evil. Newcastle United had to let him go. The same with Elliot Anderson. They may have not wanted to, but they had to because they needed to avoid that 10-point or rumour 10-point uh, point deduction, which would have you know, rock their season. It really would have done. But uh, it's going to be an interesting one to see how Minta does for Brighton. I put him in my fantasy football team. That's how confident I am. He's going to do right for Brighton. Hopefully I'm proved wrong and I'm transferring him out within the first month because he's turned into be an absolute dud. However, I think he's going to be something special. Let me know in the comments what you think or how you think Yakuba Minta's going to perform for Brighton. Let me know in the comments as well if you're a little bit concerned about the lack of that marquee signing at Newcastle United. Because um, it's quite interesting, if you go through the players that are there now, and you pick your starting 11, when everyone's fit and available, so we're not talking about the starting 11 for uh, Southampton, you know, let's say it's starting 11 for the middle of November, when hopefully uh, Sven Botman is back from that injury. And I know that's a, a, a little bit of a win. It sounds like a daft thing to be doing, but the whole point is when everyone is fit and ready to go, who is your start at 11? Now, Nick Pope, Tino Livramento, Fabian Scher, Sven Botman, let's say Lloyd Kelly. Across the middle three, you've got Bruno, Joe Linton, Tonali. On the left, you've got Anthony Gordon. Up top, Alexander Izak. And really, the, the, the position, one that is up for grabs, 
is probably that right wing and that's obviously the priority but elsewhere you look at it and you're thinking it's quite a strong start in 11 obviously you're betting on Sanders Gnarly hitting the ground running which I don't think will be too easy because you know okay he's been training all this time but he hasn't played competitive football he played in that friendly with Burnley behind closed doors but it's, you know it's not competitive in the terms of the Premier League or European football so I think it's going to take him a few weeks if not a few months to really get up to scratch until we see the best of Sandra Tonali of course he'll be available for that Spurs game at the end of September but I wouldn't hold out too much hope that we, we see the best of him until maybe the middle of October start of November just until he gets a few minutes under his belt and gets used to that competitive nature of the Premier League uh, which he didn't have for, for too too long before that ban last season uh, but of course look it's all about squad depth. It's all about having options when players are out of form or you just need to change something within a game. And Newcastle United probably don't have that at, the, at, the, at, the, at this current time. Of course, they were hit by injuries last season as well and didn't have really the players to cope with those injuries. Of course, with James Bunce coming in, you're hoping that the injuries that they had last season are, are avoided this time around. But it's about the depth of the squad. And that's when Newcastle United are really going to be struggling. They need uh, someone to come in on that right wing to instantly upgrade on Miguel Almiron, someone like uh, Gonzalez from Florentina has been uh, rumoured, you've got um, Brian and Bermo, you've got Anthony Alanga, Jared Bowen, you know, some really top quality players who have proven themselves in the Premier League and of course Gonzalez in Serie A. All them names I think are an instant upgrade on Miguel Almiron, but how easy is it to get that deal done? You haven't got European football to maybe persuade some of them to come over, but I think if you're looking at Brian and Bermo, or Anthony Lang and them deals are probably a little bit easier to be done. Won't be cheap, but I think moves from Brentford and Nottingham Forest respectively to Newcastle United, that'll be seen as an upgrade for the, for those players and their representatives. So I think those deals are probably a little bit easier to be done. Gonzalez, Argentinian international, uh, you know, they won the Copa America, didn't they, uh, last month or a couple of weeks ago. So his standing is huge and Newcastle United won't be the only club in for him. Are they going to be able to persuade him to move to Newcastle United without European football? It's not the most difficult, uh, you know, move to sell. I'm outside here at St James's Park, a fantastic arena. And I think what they would do is you would say, you come to the Premier League, best league in the world, and look what we did two seasons ago without Champions League football, without European football. We qualified for the top four, and we can do that again if you come to us. You can add a little bit of talent, a little bit of quality to the to the team. And you can help us push towards Champions League football again. So I think that's that. That's the kind of sales pitch you would give to a player who wants European football. You would say, look where we're going to be in 12 months' time. We're going to be in the Champions League and you're going to play a key part of that. But they have to get a right winger in. And they have to get him in soon. I think ideally everyone, including Eddie Howe, would like to have had the majority of transfer business done before they go out to Japan. And look, there's a few days until they fly out. Hopefully they can get one through the door, but it's not looking likely at the moment. It's really, really quiet, which I know some fans like that. They like that because they think it's just going to come out of the blue, the press know nothing. And it also means that Castanetti can't get jumped by rival teams to to a, to a new signing, which has happened before. It has happened before when it gets out that clubs are close to signing this person. You know, they thought that with Tos Torsen, who's ended up going to Chelsea on a free transfer. They got jumped by Chelsea. You know, not having it out there in the open is, is, is often a good thing. Uh, not for a journalist who wants a story, but I think for Newcastle United fans and Newcastle United, not having a constant running commentary of who's coming in or who's close is probably a good thing. But that being said, they're taking the time a little bit and there are a little bit of nerves amongst the fan base. There are also, though, a lot of fans who are just confident with the hierarchy at Newcastle United. They accept the change in the boardroom. They accept the change in sport and director Paul Mitchell coming in hasn't been in the job that long, has to get his feet under the table and, and hopefully when he does that and you know things will be working behind the background right now, things start moving. I do think once you see one signing, I think it'll be a bit of a domino effect and you'll see two or three coming in. And in truth, Newcastle United are probably only two or three big name signings or, or talented players um, away from being a, a top four side again. And OK, it doesn't have to maybe be a, a big name, it just has to be a talented player. Someone like Mbermo, as I mentioned, is he going to excite every single Newcastle United fan? No, they'll look at it and think, well, why are we signing someone from Brentford? But I imagine if it was Ivan Tony coming through the door, there'd be a lot more excitement. So I think, you know, you trust the hierarchy, you trust the recruitment team here, and you trust Eddie Howe's judgment, who will have the final say on that player, to whoever they bring in, to really improve Newcastle United. But I think everyone could just do with a new signing. That's what everyone wants, just to, let's get in a new signing, 
let's boost the spirits. I think a new sign in the next few days, the next week or so, will really pick everybody up because it does feel a little doom and gloom. But as I said, a lot of people are confident with those at Newcastle United that they've got enough credit in the bank. They've proven before that they can be successful in the transfer market. They've proven before that often it does just come out of the blue as well. But that's why there's not, no, it's not a universal worry. Um, but I do think there's a little bit of nerves that we haven't seen that marquee signing, but I'm sure it will come. And when it does come, you know, it'll probably be a little bit of a, bit of a surprise as well. Maybe a name uh, that we've not really spoken about, which is always good, always good to keep us on our toes. Let us know who you would want to the first signing or the, the, the big marquee signing to be. Let us know in the comments if you are nervous about the lack of a marquee signing with the season being less than a month away. Always intrigued to hear your comments. I've been Andrew Musgrove here outside the stat. Look at that sign behind me. It's looking good. Can't wait to get inside uh, and get a, a burger and a beer when it's finally opened. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit thumbs up. Head over to ConnorLive.co.uk for all the latest in Cast United news. And I'll see you guys very soon.